Hey guys, we're the Baker as of so today I'm doing a follow up review on the GHK Mod 18 Mod 1. Now I have not yet, still have not yet game with the gun yet, but I have shot around like 30 max or so. So I'm going to talk about the stuff that happens on the issues that I've experienced so far. And well, let's talk about the setup. Um, I'm not going to do a correct like Mark 18 build, so I'm just going to snap on some of the spare parts that I have, some of the spare accessories that I have to the gun. So for this link, I have the um, Viking Tactics V2 uh, V-Tax link, and then for the sling mount, um, nowadays I'm usually using a 550 cord instead of a sling mount, so it's more quiet, especially when you're in like CQB in a small field in Hong Kong, um, when you have like let's say a few people left, and as you're walking, sometimes the sling mount with the hook will make a sound, so people will know where you are. So that's the thing, and then for the optics, I have the um, Aimpoint T2. As for the bus star, I'm using the B5 at the moment. Um, for the original bus star, I don't really like it. I mean, the quality is not really that good. I mean, uh, of the whole gun itself, the I would say the least favorite part is the bus star. So you can see the there's a gap here, and then there's some kind of flash gate on the plastic, and you know this is not even, and the surface really rough in comparison to this. And then I don't really like the silver shining from the black bus stock, so in the end I'm changing to a B5. But and I've also tried it with a mil spec map pole CTL and also fit on the buffer tube. But then um the CTL will fit better in here in the B5. This it had a little wobble, but in the end I apply a massing tape on the top so currently there's only a little movement going front and back but on sideways it's little to no movement and I've cut out the two position of the bus stop black so then it doesn't reflect the white masking tape right here so so well I have this bus stop as a spare so if I were to get a new one I would go for the CTL instead of this one just so then it's just so it had the friction lock for really tighten the bus stop. It has no movement at all. And next, going over the magazine, um, you might want to get a few more spare O wings on the valve here. As you can see, the the one on my right side. Let me get a focus here. Hold on. You see, the one on the right has a black O wing, whereas the one on the left, the O wing is gone. So when I was charging, the O-Wing came out with the um, gas, so out of the 4 max, I've lost 2 already. So you may want to get a few more O-Wings here for better um, for better seal when you're putting in the gas. And this magazine is compatible with the G5 magazine. Um, it's not exactly the same as the G5 one. I, I feel like this one is a lot more lighter than the original G5 magazine. So that's the magazine itself. As for the trigger, um, uh, two weeks ago I have shot a real AR and I specifically um, slower on my reset on the AR just to do the trigger reset and I have to say of the, of the say GHK, the Maui um, set system, the MWS or the VFC um, Mark 18, I will say the GHK trigger reset feels the closest to the real thing. So that's so far for the outlooks, and as for the performance itself, um, on the stock gun, I have tested on 10 rounds at 20 meters away, as you can see in the videos, and the grouping is about 6-7 inches here, so it's, it has more to do with the hop up than the sideway, going sideway, so I would say it's a full hand size in here. And the upgrade that I'm trying this time is the Prometheus flat hop knob and the Prometheus straight buggings. Now the straight buggings is different than the other ones. The straight bugging is doesn't have any um, plastic in inside, so it's just a smooth round buggings. So, um, but I've ran into issues when I'm installing it. As you can see the picture here, the flat knob is bigger than the cut window of the bell and of the chamber itself. So if I have if I were to fit the flat hop to the GHK, I'll have to, 
you know, cut the window breaker and also cut the plastic part. But then the lever, the arm, is not going to be in the center. So that gave me an issue. So in the end, I decided to chop off the left and right on the flat nut, you know, to fit on the gun here. Now to take this apart is it's really easy. So um, you see these four screws here. So you uns unscrew the four screw at the back. Then you unscrew the two screw here. And as you're unscrewing these two, just to make sure you're unscrewing them evenly, so then the rail doesn't get tilted and get stuck. So after you unscrew that, you can take this whole rail out, and then you um, take up your flash shutter, and it is you can take it out by you can take this out by turning it clockwise, clockwise as in your barrel is facing you. So after taking out the flash shutter, there's a little screw under the glass box. And after you take out that screw, the gas block and the gas tube can just light out. And so after those comes the hard part is the barrel nut. The barrel nut, even though if you can't really hold the gun properly, it's really hard to turn it by itself. So um, at the gun range, uh, the gunsmith had a tool made by GMP, and it's a little plate here that can attach to the top here, and then you can clamp down the plates and then to secure the the rifle in order for you to. Um, you don't unscrew the barrel nut. So after you unscrew the barrel nut, you can just pull out the outer barrel and the inner barrel and the hop-up chamber can just pull out from the outer barrel and then you you slide the um, hop-up adjustment wheel and as for the chamber, there's no screw or anything, you can just split it open and after split it open, you can see the, um, the lever arm, the knob, uh, the buggings and the inner barrel. So as mentioned, after I cut out the left and right on the flat up, I installed the Prometheus buggings, the flat up, and put it back together. And then I have done another accuracy test. And I found the accuracy test is a bit worse than the original setup. I don't know if it's because I cut out, you know, I shortened the flat up, so it it will affect the effectiveness of what it's supposed to do. So um, in the end, I got a worse accuracy than the stock GHK but then um, upon for further testing you can see this little white plate target beside the um, beside the A3 sheet and on a 3 round burst I would say pretty much every time one will hit that target so it's worse than the stock but it's not really it's not too too bad I guess and after all that, I've done a simple cooldown test on a gun. So I have 4 max and I just went and shoot, I mean, just shoot straight all 4 max um, continuously by double tapping, triple tapping on the GHK. So I just want to see if at the end of 4 max I can still get a bow lock or if the cooldown is severe enough that um, you know the gas just blow out all at once and then you lose all the gas in the magazine. But luckily, um, in the 4 max, each of the max can get a bow lock and I think at the range it was about um, 23, 24 degrees Celsius I mean it has AC on and everything and although I have noticed a few BBs um, just drop off from the barrel instead of like, shooting it out but overall it can shoot 4 max straight And the last thing I want to mention is the hop-up wheel. Um, upon all the tuning in the range and you know, up before and after the upgrades, the wheel gets some damage from the flathead screwdriver constantly pushing in there. Um, if it gets enough damage, you will lose the grip on the wheel and then you can no longer tune the wheel. So in the older GHK model where they have the RS rail, where you can like you know pull the wheel out and tune it by hand, that's actually, it's not as convenient as this one, but it actually prevents the wheel from getting damaged from the metal. So um, on the next upgrade, on the, on the or the next testing, I may test the, I may change the wheel to an aluminum one, maybe the maple leaf chamber or the TNT chamber set, the chamber barrel set. I have not yet decided. So once I've decided what to do next, I will do another follow-up video. So this is the first follow-up video on the GHK Mark 18 of what I have, what I have experienced so far of the gun. 
So please leave a comment or you, if you have any question on a gun, please ask. Um, I'll try to answer them as much as possible. And I will see you guys next time.